Okay, so I told you guys I want to do a 12th gen build for myself. Uh, and we're gonna start that process today. But I, one of the things I don't usually do is necessarily talk about why I use certain components. And I thought maybe we'd start today's video by showing you the main components we're gonna use, right? Obviously RAM, CPU, CPU's obvious, we're gonna use 12900K, but in motherboard, and then I've got to transfer over the CPU and clean it up and all that. So I figured we'd kind of do a little bit of a rationale type video today. And uh, this is directly in response to some of the stuff you guys said you wanted to see in my previous video where I was just whining. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer, and right now they're proud to announce expansion and availability to Australia, the Netherlands, France, and Italy. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Want to build your own PC but still have the NZXT peace of mind warranty? Then the new BLD Build It Yourself kit has what you want. Buy it and build it yourself and NZXT has you covered. To get started configuring or building your next gaming PC, visit the build link in the description below. So this is the Maximus Hero from ASUS. This is the motherboard that we did our initial 12900 testing on. The Hero is not a bad board, it's not. It's, it's more entry level for the ROG lineup. Uh, it's a step above a Strix, but it doesn't have some of the features that you would find on something like the Maximus Extreme. I actually wanted the Maximus Formula. Uh, I'm using a Maximus Formula now in my 10th gen build at home. However, and yeah, I think people still are surprised to find out I'm still running 10th gen at home, not 11th gen. Um, because I wanted the two extra cores. But um, the interesting thing about using the formula this time around is ASUS only makes it in white, which is really odd because the formula, so the formula essentially is where it has the integrated water block for the VRMs. So you'd have a built-in water block here and here and it'd be like a single uh, unit and you would have an inlet and an outlet or they're interchangeable. And then it would allow you to actually water cool the VRMs. So I like to use that option when available. And the current block that, I, or the current uh, setup that I'm using with the Maximus 10th Gen has that with the EK distro block that goes on top that attaches it to uh, the CPU block and it looks like one single distro plate on top, which is pretty neat. I'm not doing a white build. So as such, that means, and if this looks all scratched right here, by the way, the plastic's still on it, see? So I don't want to, uh... why do those pull tabs always pull off? I was thinking about loading out my motherboard with as much storage as I could possibly put on it. The only thing I do at home is play games anymore, so I don't need that. And that's the first thing as to why I'm not using like some crazy high core count Threadripper at home or even some like a 5950X at home uh, because I literally do nothing at home work-wise with the exception of maybe my live stream and that, that's, that's hard to describe as work as far as I'm concerned. But the most I might ever do is if I've got to leave or something and Phil will sync the video that needs to go live via our um, our online share. We talked about before how that works, but anyway, I, I digress. That's not what this video is about. I might need to make a thumbnail or something and I'll do that at home on Photoshop. And even then my Photoshop at home has been really acting very weird and buggy. So I think as it is, I'm gonna to have to completely wipe that and start all over with that anyway, um, because my Photoshop install has gotten all borked somehow. But I am using two two terabyte uh, NVMEs from uh, Crucial. And these are P5 drives, there's P5 and P5 Plus. They're the standard P5 drives, they're plenty fast. Programs that need to load fast will go uh, on there with the OS. Things that those programs are gonna access go on a second drive. That way they can kind of work um, asynchronously to, like if I, if I needed to edit a video or something, it'd be on a second drive. Premiere would be on a different drive. That way they scratch discs technically would be much faster. Now I don't edit at home, but that's how I would have set it up. If you're trying to set something up like that, I would recommend program on one drive, data on another drive, it'll work much faster that way. Um, I've got my Steam library on a secondary drive, and so that's how it's set up at home. But because this is a PCIe Gen 4, <coughs> PCIe Gen 4 drives, which were only fast, like as fast as they're advertised on AMD systems are now just as fast on new Intel systems because these are now, PCIe 5. But before I show you guys the uh, Extreme, the Maximus Extreme and what it looks like compared to the Hero, I've got to get my my CPU out of here and I've got to clean it up. What is that? I didn't do that. <laughs> it's fine, it landed on the socket part, like the part on top, see? Pins are fine. Crap, where's my cover for it? <laughs> All right, so the ROG Maximus Z690 Extreme. <laughs> For starters, it's extremely heavy. To me, it feels like it's nearly as heavy as the Dominus. You guys remember the Dominus? That was that, the one for the W3175X? Ugh. 
They put a lot of effort into the sides you can't even see. But check this out. I mean, it, it's got this rear armor stuff. So the nice thing is you can grab it and not be just completely shredding your fingers because of the fact that the back has all the bottom of the solder joints popping out. Um, but anyway, so why am I using this board? Well, one, it's extreme! But it's one of those things where, I, I mean, people have kind of come to expect me to use over the top parts. This is completely unnecessary for gaming, but remember I talked about that VRM cooling? Even though I'm not able to run a heat sink on this because of the formula for whatever reason, like I said, it only comes in white. Look at the, this is like the Coliseum. I mean, look at this. Like, <laughs> that's where the gladiators duel the tigers, and this is where the crowd sits. But it's got the typical stuff you'd expect that you didn't see on the other board, I don't believe it didn't. So this has Dim.2, which will allow me to actually put two NVMe drives on here uh, that have direct lanes to the CPU, right next to the RAM. So that's why it's called Dim.2, because it's right next to the Dim6. Um, like I said, plenty of cooling for the VRMs. It's got that same feature that we've like, we fell in love with, which is the push button release for the graphics card uh, tab right here. Now I don't typically have my graphics card, you know, going in and out a whole bunch, uh, or once it's in there, especially when it's water cooled. Which by the way, on my build, I'm still torn on whether or not I'm gonna continue to use my 3090 Founders Edition air cooled, or if I'm gonna switch over to my Strix 3090, which is water cooled. That's in the white build that I was using for work that I replaced with the new, the new thread, or, uh, Skunk Works that I built with Threadripper in it, which has a 3090 Gaming X Trio in there, which means I now have my 3090 Strix available to potentially go in something like this. I might change the water block on that though, because there's a lot of chrome in there. And I'm thinking on this build, I want to go with less of the nickel plating with clear plexi and go back back to like the black acetal and all that. So it's nice and, and just blacked out, if you will, I guess. Um, so it's one of those things where I'll accent it with maybe silver fittings with black caps or something like that to get kind of a silver black theme going here that's neutral. So if I want to change the colors with RGB later, I can do that, which would mean that any cables that I have made would also be neutral, maybe like a carbon and a black and a silver or something like that, because then the color will go with whatever I, I choose. And the nice thing about silver is it will catch any RGB light that's inside the case, which will then just look like, you know, colored sleeving, if you will. Typical stuff you would expect, you've got your flex key, which is kind of like a restart. Um, I believe the flex key just forces a restart with a memory retrain. Kind of like a safe mode restart. And then you've got your power button. But what I like about this too is it has the shield over all of the ports on the side. So you've got your bottom ports here. We got two USB 2.0. We've got some re, um, manual buttons here for different modes, LN2 mode, all that sort of stuff. All the fan headers together, all the RGB headers together. On the side though, as you can see, this is all like covered by this. So it's just gonna make it that much more of a clean aesthetic when it comes to having stuff plugged in there. So you're not gonna see the actual cables plugged in, you'll just see the wires coming out of it, which will look a whole lot neater. And then in terms of the PCIe uh, slots, you have a 16X and an 8X. Remember, SLI is something that's like pretty much dead. Like, I mean, it, it's, it is dead. There's no other way to put it. Part of me is still debating doing SLI in this, just because I can, and it's the kind of thing that when I went with Skunk Works back down to one card, the most common thing I saw was people being disappointed that it didn't have SLI, even though it wasn't, a, even though it wasn't necessary because my builds were always known to be unnecessarily overkill. So it was kind of like, do it for the nostalgia of what Skunk Works always represented. But in this case, the only thing the second card would be doing would be any sort of video encoding, or I could have a, a dedicated encoder on the second card for OBS, and it's not hitting my first card, which means absolutely zero impact, even if I'm using the MVEC encoder uh, to my gaming performance. So I am undecided on that, mostly because if I do have SLI enabled, it's known to cause problems with certain so hardware or software and games that don't use SLI. Things like micro stuttering or even just full on um, weirdness when it comes to G-Sync. By having SLI enabled in games that don't support it, there's weird stutters and frame drops that happen until you disable SLI. And I don't wanna have to constantly go in and enable, disable, enable, disable, depending on what weirdness that I'm getting to happen. So that's something that I don't want to deal with. All right, so we've got, oh, wow. ROG warning. Once ROG, forever ROG. I like this cover though here. Um, there is no thermal pad on there, which is kind of interesting. So let's see if thermal pads come in the box. I mean, there's some on that side. All right, so this is a USB-C DAC, standard USB 3.0 driver disc, six port fan and RGB hub. 
That way, if you're using standard RGB fans, like ARGB fans with the three pins and whatnot, you can actually control it through Armory Crate and Aura and not have to use another piece of software there. Here's the Dim Dot 2. We've got a ton of these floating around because they're not unique to the motherboard. Antenna for the Wi-Fi 6E, by the way. I don't use Wi-Fi, but if you need to use Wi-Fi, there's Wi-Fi 6E. So this right here is an ROG graphics card holder. It actually attaches to the card. It looks magnetic as well, which is interesting. And then this will lower to kind of give it like a brace like that. ARGB splitter, three-way splitter, four-way splitter. And then last but not least, ROG True Voltiken. So it turns out the uh, ROG True Vulcan, or Vulcan, Voltiken, Voltiken. Voltiken can't pronounce. Looks like Voltician, <laughs> whatever. This is, technically it's an oscilloscope, which is for extreme overclocking. It gives you hardware monitoring for five volt and 12 volt voltages. That way, if you're doing extreme overclocking with this, you get some actual hardware voltage monitoring on this. So that's everything that comes in the box here. Um, my question is, are there thermal pads for that? Which is what I was initially looking for. And it appears that the answer is no. Weird, I wonder if that's missed. Like there was supposed to be pads down there. <laughs> it really does look like there should be thermal pads on that. So again, early sample. That just could be an early sample thing, but whatever. I am probably not gonna use those anyway. I am going to more than likely use the Dim.2. When you run multiple drives on the Dim.2, it obviously has to share the, uh, the those lanes. Now I would assume that they're separate lanes, but I shouldn't assume because you know what happens when you do that. Oh my God. There is also a note on here that says, this is PCIe 5.0 M.2. M.2 underscore one shares bandwidth P with PCIe 16 one and PCIe 16 underscore or two. So this is telling you this is sharing lanes with this one and this is sharing lanes with this one. So something else to keep in mind, if I was gonna run SLI, I could be affecting the amount of uh, PCIe bandwidth to the storage, which can saturate PCIe lanes much faster than the graphics card will. So by going with the Dim.2 though, this should be entirely different lanes than sharing with PCIe 1 and PCIe 2. So something to keep in mind when it comes to the configuration. A lot of people I think overlook that and they just go, oh yeah, they're just M.2, they're independent, they're PCIe. Well, yeah, they still have to share lanes with that. It's, I'm a little conflicted on this as well because I do have a 32 gigabyte kit or a 64 gigabyte kit that uses four, four eight, gig, uh, uh, eight gig sticks. Wait, no, four 16 gig sticks. Now DDR5 has doubled the capacity available per stick, which is why we can have a 64 gigabyte kit with two sticks. These are two 32 gig sticks. In terms of overclocking, having two sticks is the best, but I'm not actually gonna be overclocking this. I'm going to let it, I'm just gonna remove all the limits. I'm gonna let it self overclock. Um, I might push it 100 megahertz or 200 megahertz maybe just so I can get at least a five core, maybe 5.1 core, all core overclock. But with the E core, P core stuff, it's a lot less beneficial to overclock these days versus uh, just letting the logic handle itself. I've seen some people complain about Corsair's new, it's, you can't even call it new. It looks exactly like the DDR4 did, but I personally, people complain that it's too boring. I love the sleek aesthetic of it. The matte black on the heatsink matches the matte all over the motherboard. So you can see now why I wanna do the black and silver component theme and get rid of the shininess of the nickel plating that's on some of the blocks and stuff. It is an EATX motherboard, so that's something that you have to keep in mind you know, with your case. Not all cases these days support EATX. This is pretty close to a true EATX in terms of its width, but that's something that you guys will have to you know, take up with you and your case. Mm. The height of the heatsink actually makes it difficult to get your hand in there because it's like it's so recessed down in there. I feel like I feel like 12th gen uses more force now on that lever than it used to because it's bigger and there's more pins to make contact. They get any bigger, they'll have to do like thread ripper and they'll have to start like using a torque wrench to make sure it's all down in there properly. Undecided, do I want to use four sticks or do I want the gap? Yeah, I feel like if I don't fill it out. Nick! Four sticks, stat. So this is what 128 gigabytes of DDR5 looks like. I don't, I really don't think I'm gonna run this because I just feel, I just feel guilty doing that because of how the RAM, I, does somebody somewhere 
in the universe just spin the wheel of the, the wheel of shortage? Like, do we just, ah, you know what? Graphics cards are starting to improve a little bit. Let's just go ahead and cue the RAM shortage. Go, you know, there. That does look good though. If you look at it from that perspective, it like kind of keeps the heat seek design going. It looks so good, I feel guilty filming it right I now. I know. <laughs> Is it 12900K uh -huh. with 128 gigabytes of DDR5 look like? I like this a lot. Oh, it's so heavy. Two hands. Oh, dude. I wish we had a scale. All right, well, there you go. That's that's our main component tree that's going to be going into my personal build. Now, I haven't uh, decided what case I'm going to use yet. I'm potentially going to reuse the Inwin 925 and redo that loop in some way. I'm potentially going to use maybe Singularity Spectre 3. I just have not decided. The case, that's the part for me that has to be unique. I mean, I can't just use another rectangle from another brand. There's nothing wrong that with, with like, the Corsair 7000D or the 5000D or the fractal cases or whatever. It's just, to, for me, like when you look at something this unique, the case kind of has to match the craziness. I mean, look at the cases that are sitting behind me, right? I've got an S frame, I got a D frame, and then I've got the 928. That's like the that's like the, the table O Inwin fanboyism. But you know, it, to me, Inwin makes some of the best obscure type cases. Unfortunately, they don't really have anything right now that's new or different. That, that's, I think they're still selling the 925 potentially, but that's it. You know, they only do these limited edition, like one-off weird cases uh, kind of sporadically throughout the years. And I think right now with the production issues being are, are what they are with COVID and all that, that maybe they're not doing any of that right now because of potential production um, constraints at the moment. But whatever, there's that. I want your guys' suggestions on a case. I've already made it clear what kind of cases that I like. Um, I don't want to do any sort of open chassis a full open chassis, if you will. So yeah, the Spectre is fairly open, right? It, it's the it's the evolution of the case I used for the Post Malone case, but it's two generations later now. Um, I like the fact that the, the back wall is all distro plate and whatnot. I don't want to use something like the Cougar Conquer or any of those real like spacey, like crazy angle type cases. I just want something clean and classy, but that's different than the, the typical rectangles that obviously people do for computer cases. So this is where I would love your suggestions down below on cases that I should use, or maybe send me a picture of it on Twitter, at Jay's Two Cents uh, for Twitter, because I'm definitely up there and can see your comments there a lot easier than I can here on the video. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and as always, we'll see you in the next one. And action. All right, guys. What? <laughs> I didn't get much sleep last night, I'm tired. <laughs>